Hi there, I'm Johnny Smith. I've got a YouTube channel called The Late Break Show. And I'm really, really pleased to announce that EBC Breaks are gonna be partnering with me on a playlist, which is all new called Car Caves, where I'm gonna explore some very important people's garages and collections of vehicles all over the UK. It's gonna be fun, but I've never actually been into EBC Breaks before. Hi, hey Johnny. James, how are you doing? Good to see you again. Yeah, good. Now I've been out around here, I've been to a couple of car events here, but I've actually never been inside. I quite like seeing the internal workings of businesses. Absolutely, well come on, let's go and have a look. Yes, have a look, let's have a look. Can I park there by the way? I've yeah, just, just you left it. Leave it. Just gonna just leave abandon it. Abandon it there. It's safe. So the thing about EBC that fascinates me still now is that all your stuff's made in the UK. Yeah, is that pretty, right? Pretty much. We've got factories in America as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we make as much as we possibly can ourselves, even even down to sort of uh, million turning. Uh, Do you? We, we subcontract a couple of little bits like hardening, which is quite a difficult process and a dirty process to do, but it's all locally what we, uh, what okay. we subcontract. So that's, I mean, in a world where a lot of stuff is farmed out to far away places, it seems to sort of buck that trend in many ways. And I know before you guys got involved with the Late Break Show. I know I've used EBC pads and discs on numerous cars of mine over the years as a sort of an OEM upgrade. That's right, yeah. Um, and you'll notice for, for motorcycles and cars, we make stuff from the sort of 1950s, 60s onwards, yeah. right? and we still make it now. I want to know how you decide when to make stuff or when to stop making stuff. <laughs> like, why would you still be making a, a break for a car which it's really old, I suppose. Well, really, at... when demand slows down, we'll make a last final batch, but it's, it's very few and far between, to Is be it? honest. But that last final batch could last us 10 years. Wow. And I suppose you keep the... Uh... We always keep the tooling. Yes. Course. I was going to say, you don't chuck that stuff away anymore. Yeah. So this is Pressworks, Johnny. I'll take you in here. This is the stamping area. A little Stamp. bit noisy. Okay. Is it the giant foot from Monty Python? <laughs> is <that it>? right. <laughs> it's just that, isn't it? Hi, Martin. Oh. Thank you. So, wow. all the metal in here we buy in from uh, some from the UK, some from Northern Europe, and some from Germany. Okay. Uh, it's all high quality. So, this is just coils of metal? Coils of steel, yeah. Steel? Yeah. Wow. So what that is is fed through presses, hydraulic presses. So all the tooling we make in here as well work for our global sort of uh, yep. manufacturing. Wow! It really is. It just walks straight in, and it and and its brake parts being made right straight here. away. We'll have a look what's being made today. Obviously, different days. Everything. Everything's different, you can come in here. Yeah, you need to tell me what they're making today. I'm really interested to see that. Well, that's right. Well, I can tell you this one here, that. Yeah. Okay. That's for an unusual vehicle. That's for a Polaris slingshot. Is that a quad? Like a... Yeah, a three-wheeled road going oh, is Polaris it? machine. How do you know that from that? <laughs> 28. There's no 28, label on it. 28 years of experience, that is. That's amazing. A Polaris slingshot. Yeah. So all of these machines, they're, they're, they're stamping. Yeah, so they're stamping. This one's being cleaned down at the moment. The scrap comes out the front and the good product comes out on the side. Right. I'll try, and okay. find, try and find something. Now, of course, what we've done, we've caught them all on tea break, haven't we? We're right on the tea break. Of course. <laughs> Always the way. Always the way. So that's the type of back in play. Okay. So this one is, is for a motorcycle, I'm not sure which one, but I can tell from this, is, this one is going to be copper passivated and then sent to our American factory for sintered brake pad production, this one. How do you know that? That's we, just, we just know. That's amazing. So EBC have got a big presence in America. Yeah, absolutely. But they've always been a British company. 
Yeah, oh, it's based in Northampton, started in Northampton in, in 1983 and just carried on through. So wow. It's like a, it's still owned by one person globally. Really? One shareholder, yeah, he's retired now, but. Wow. Uh, it's still owned by him. Wow. And, e and everything you see, we own, which is quite unusual in this day and age. It, it well, is, so. I think it is. So, how many types of freight do you make, approximately? Well, skews, well, we make more than just brakes but skews from this building we have about 35,000 different types. 35,000? Yeah. yeah. Wow. You go around the back here, I'll show you 35,000? Bloody hell, that's a lot. See all this tooling, it's all made here. one of those plates. We go through a tumbling, take all the sharp edges off. If you feel the edge is very sharp on this one. Yeah. Go through this and look in here. Uh, they're going through this media, tumbled, and they become smoother. Oh, it just shakes it? Yeah, yeah. If you, if you can feel that compared, it's very limited on it. Right. Wow. Here's a, here's a finished one. Yeah. And that's just from doing that. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, such a simple idea, but obviously works pretty well. Yeah. These are planishing machines, so they make plates flat. You take the stress out. You see it's got lots of dimples in there, so that planishes it, makes it flat. That does that. It takes the stress out as well. Okay. And of course a lot of our a lot of our processes are very manually intensive because we make so many different types. Yeah, yeah. And we're a sort of fairly small batteries compared to an OE. Yeah. For an OE would make uh, five million sets for a Ford Cortina, but we would make maybe 200, 200 of course. sets at a time. But at the same time, that surely that's made you. That's that's why your company is built up the reputation that it has. Exactly. Yeah. Did you cover all things? And, it's for, and for enthusiasts as well, because we make products or performance products for like a Mark V or Mark III Granada or something like that. Yeah. 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 But this system here is called NRS. We license this from a company in Canada called Pinkout, and it's a it's a mechanical retention system. So it takes the flat plate, this is for a Harley Davidson. He just knows. And he just knows. What it what it would do, it, it would put an NRS system on it, a mechanical attachment system. If you have a look at the other end. Yeah. If you look oh. at that and hold that up to the light, you can see it's almost like a Velcro type system where it curls over the metal. Yeah. So as, as we bond material onto that, yeah. um, as the resins get hot and flow, they flow into that so you get a mechanical retention. Oh, okay. So it would, okay. that, that friction material would never pop off the plate. Right, okay. Long, long time ago, um, you used to have a problem if a, if a car or a bike has been left for several winters and stuff, you might get a little tiny crack around the edge. You could get some water in there. Yeah. Obviously, as it freezes, it expands and it can push that plane away. Yeah. So with this system, that's so that just makes sure that they stay. Right. Okay. You can almost bend that 90 degrees, and the friction will stay on there. Really? Yeah, absolutely. So, so this one, because of the NOS, which is going to Bristol next, event, this we go next Wednesday to Bristol for the friction to be turned off. Right. So you've got the the, the the main factory in Bristol. So all of this stuff gets. So I decided to go to Ohio or Bristol. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah. Wow.
when did you guys go digital like online sales were you quite an early adopter of mail order we had a we had a few companies who um yeah who were quite early in that scene around here uh so that's i think that's helped us for yeah. sure uh, i think that obviously the next stage is to try and push a bit of social media and try and expand our presence uh, yeah because there's certainly people around the world who don't know about us but currently from this side we sell to about 120 different countries later on i'll show you some of the boxes going out and if you look at the countries you'll see yeah the, the diversity of it. Yeah. Because that's the thing, I, I first learned about EBC from the different coloured performance pads, you know, the upgrade pads. Yeah, yeah, the green stuff, the red stuff, the e red stuff. Exactly, <laughs> and, and it was always back cover of magazine adverts. That's right, we, and, and, and that's back in the sort of max power days, the fast car and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. so I, I was, it was just really easy to reference with the different colours. That's right, yeah. This so is our quite... this is our tool room. Yeah. We're just waiting for another machine actually next week to be installed here. So it's a bit messy at the moment. Okay. But we have basic machinery uh, or engineering machinery in there. Yeah. Uh, like grinders and welding and all sorts of stuff. And then out here we have CNC. Yeah. And some smaller sort of knee mill CNC and stuff, and then some wire eroders. And that makes all our tooling globally. And again, the only thing we send out is for hard mode, which is a local company as well. Right, okay. Is that because you need a furnace? Yeah, well, it's a very dirty, messy process. <laughs> I don't want to be involved with that on a nice fight like this. <laughs> oh. Hi, how are you doing? So it really is like... Yeah, it's, proper, day, proper, day, it's proper British engineering. That's right, yeah. British manufacturing, isn't it? Yeah. I think you'll be quite impressed when you, if, you, if you're ever in Bristol, pop into the Bristol factory. Yeah, it's, I'd love to see it. It's the type of thing you'd love, yeah. Yeah. This is just the sort of test area. They check all the tooling, make sure it's all up to spec and everything. Keep all the records. It's very, very, yeah, pretty old school. Right? Yeah, it is, yeah. It's great to see. Well, we're going, we're going around into this works now. The difference with this little area, this is a double skin wall and it's almost built a separate building because of the presses. And all the foundations are built within rubber. So you can't build the braces around in any other really? building. Really? Yeah. You have some... So it looks the same building, yeah. but it's, it's not. Did you have to do it that way? Did you have to do that for, for neighbourhood? Yeah, and we wanted to actually. We, yeah. we did extra, to be honest. Well, I suppose when you're hearing it, if you're hearing that all day, yeah. <laughs> Do you guys it. ever run 24 hours, or has that never been a necessity? Not, not on this site, no. Okay. Um, we have the ability to. Yeah. Uh, so you, because you started at EBC on the shop floor, didn't you? Did you? Yeah, start? I was. Uh, I was uh, quality. Yeah, down in Bristol. Yeah. We're going to go through this way. Uh, yeah, 1993. So, so was it your first job? No, it was my second. I was a, I was a Rolls, I worked for Rolls Royce in Bristol. Yeah. Military turbine engines as, a, as an apprentice. Yeah. So uh, at the time, there was no wars going on. Uh, we finished our apprenticeship, and there was no real job. So, <laughs> they offered us, they offered us three and a half thousand pounds, and at 19, that's uh, quite a chunk of change. And I think we all wanted to buy cars. So <laughs> of course, of course, we left, and, and there you go. We go into this works first. Yeah. Come back and see some. I'm recognising all area. these these boxes now. <laughs> yeah. So do you, seriously, James, because you've impressed me with knowing just from looking at the backing plates what those pads were going to go yeah. into. Can you look at um, serial numbers? Well, actually, because of Regulation 90 in Europe now we have to put popular applications on the label. So we don't have to put every application because obviously with a VW pad, it could fit yeah. 130 types of vehicle. If you look on any one of these here, you'll see there's a popular application. So a Renault Capture 0 0.9 turbo, I guess That's it is. right, yeah, it is. 1.2, 1.5D, 2013 on. And then it also fits a Clio. Brilliant. 
but you wouldn't need to know that because I bet you could look at you go DP twenty two one four six. Some of them I could, some of them I could, not all of them. We've got too many there. What's the hardest? But obviously, back in the day, back in the in the nineties when I was uh, working in the factory, yeah, our popular two most popular brake pads were the Ford Escort, yeah, the wings on, of course, and then of course the old Cavalier pad, which used to fit the Novas, the Cavaliers, the Astras, yeah. And everything yeah. pretty much back in the That was all the bread and butter. Yeah, yeah. How times have changed. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, how many types of pad did you manufacture back then versus how many you've oh. uh, What is it, like quadruple? Oh, probably more. Ten yeah. times? Probably ten times. I would really? Think. Yeah, for sure. Wow. And of course, we have to test, test them all for Regulation 90, which is all tested at Myra, in yeah. the research lab. And yeah. The cars are driven around and tested. And yeah. And you have to do your own R&D and... That's yes, right, yeah. We yeah. have R&D centres in the USA, um, one on this site and, and one in Bristol as well. Wow. That's amazing. It's a little bit messy in here. We just, we just purchased a, another engineering company who uh, wanted to retire. So yeah. they said, OK, we'll buy you. Um, so oh, and you've got all their machinery so we'll, and all. We'll bring a couple of their machines in. And right. Yeah. So I've noticed this is all bike. This is all bike discs. This is, is it? This is bike discs in this bit. This yeah. is bikes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we have obviously CMM machines. Every back is checked. Yeah. We have uh, laser effing over here. Um, top lashing, flattening, grinding, milling. Yeah, you can see all the various types. This is a, this is another one. This is quite a new one. This is an oversized for a Harley. You know these big custom Harleys where they yeah. they want everything bigger. So oh, that's the new thing. So we do 13, 14, and 15 inch oversized for Harley Land. Wow. Good fun. Yeah, because you're you you've been a pretty big name in the bike world for a long time. Yeah, I mean. Uh, well, we're huge all across, all across the world, really, in the bike. Um, America, they say we've got about over 70% of the aftermarket in America. 70? Yeah. Wow. We're bigger than all the OEs combined. That's okay. Yeah. How have you noticed um, the difference with like aftermarket stuff since the pandemic began? Well, it's actually exploded. Our business has is, is, is gone really well. We've been very lucky. Wow. Um, is that because people are maybe spending a bit more money on their own car, I a bit more time? I think, I think there's a couple of things. I think, first of all, they've got more time at home. So the old car in the garage, the yeah. old bike they're going to work on. Like me. Yeah, like yeah, you. Like exactly me. like you. Yeah. Um, Secondly, I don't think people are buying quite as many new cars because you can't go to dealer. So they say, OK, we'll keep this for another year and see how it goes, see what pans out. Yeah. And of course, the other the other point is, maybe not so much in this country, but other countries like America and certainly mainland Europe, instead of flying, people are driving now. So in America, they're driving 12 hours, they're not flying for an hour. Of course. So because they don't want to be with other so people. So there's more wear on yeah. those cars. Right, right. There's an interesting one, Johnny. I think that's for a Buell bike. You know? A Buell? Oh, Buell I yeah. remember Buells. Where it actually fits on the wheel. That's oh, right. You, you who actually I, made I that. really like Buells. <laughs> yeah. I always thought they were a cool Eric bike. Buell is quite a clever bike, yeah. I think, yeah. But they just, they stopped, didn't they? Did they stop? They discontinued Buells, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it started again. I think it, it's one of those companies which keeps coming back. Yeah. I, I fancy one actually. I was Yeah. So these are time saving machines, these are mills. So discs here, the backing plates will go down to Bristol for the pads to go onto the backing plates exactly. or to America. Yeah. And then there's some old school machines here for well, a lot turning, of machines. and then there's some new double disc grinder here from Italy. Yeah. You must have so many files, computer files, for all the different yeah, dark designs yes. of disc and pad. Absolutely, yeah. And then every machine is different. <laughs> of course. Yeah. 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 You can see these are, Brilliant. These are start off with a billet and 
that's, that's half finished and then it'll go over the other side so it starts with that with a with a billet and yeah. are they are they pre they cut here ends up like that and it'll end up like that well, not like that one but like this one <laughs> wow very nice so we do produce quite a bit of scrap as you can see from that but it's all sold all our scrap is very good quality so uh, we so you sell it you sell, sell it straight it back, back yeah I and mean, then it'll probably come back to you a few months later, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? Right, yeah. You can see just all the diverse range of stuff. It's like I, I mean, I'm, I'm a bit. These ones, these. I think the thing for here. me, looking at these. Let's see this. That's milling out the centre. So there's a, this is a for a float in this, obviously. We, there's two types of motors like this, one with a floating centre, so that's um, aluminium. I was yeah. going to say aluminium then, nearly. Did you nearly say aluminium? <laughs> I nearly said it. And uh, yeah, with a stainless steel outer, and then yeah. obviously really flat. And that's then nice. there's solid discs as well, which is this one here. Yeah. Very cool. I think the thing for me is I just I don't know how you keep track of all the variants, all the different variations. What well, within production you mean? Within or? production, but then looking ahead of what what's coming up that you should be taking notice of, and then of course in the past all the well trends are constantly changing, particularly over the last year. Right. Uh, we found certain products. Well, we could have sold. 550 in, the, in 2019. Yeah. Suddenly, within the first few months of this financial year, in 2021, we saw 1800. So really? Trends are very, very old at the moment. And I think that's what's catching a lot of companies out. Yeah. But we're constantly on it. We're on. on so you you can change your you can change your production pretty swiftly, can you? Oh, exactly. Yeah. You can change it within within minutes. Right. So you so, you. You can make the decision tonight. Yeah, yeah. To totally right. change. Yeah. Hi, Hi Laura. Let's go up here. This is where your calipers should be coming on. Oh, my calipers. I know they're not exactly high performance. Uh, <laughs> but exactly like you said, I think a lot of people have dug out the car that's, or the motorbike that's been in the garage sitting around. Absolutely. And they've had more time on their hands, so they thought, well, I don't normally work on it, but maybe I will this time. Yeah, well, I, I've done exactly that. I've dug out my Husqvarna over here. And uh, and you've worked on it? Well, yeah, I've worked on it. I've realised the starter motor didn't work. And I've been waiting now like, six weeks from Austria for a new one. Have you? <laughs> so, but uh, here I come. Hi, right, Steve. This is Johnny. Hi. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Yeah, not bad. How are you doing with these calipers? Uh, I thought you were going to say you've just thrown them away because <laughs> they were rubbish. <laughs> How do they look? Do they need to go back in a little bit, yeah. do they? Just for a light blast to clear all this out. They look alright actually. I know one of them, one of the pistons on the near side was not quite returning, it was They've been sat for 15 years, so nice. So you've blasted it and then given it a bath. Yeah. Nice. Just go back for a light blasting now, just to clear all that. Just inside there. Yeah. I was going to ask you actually, James, that I know EBC. A lot of it is brand new discs, pads, yeah, yeah. hoses. But do you still do reconditioning of we, stuff? We or? do it. We do it um, mainly as favours for people locally because it's obviously very difficult. If people send us our calipers, we do it as a service and so yeah. back. Uh, it's becoming less and less. Yeah. Um, but we still do it. But I suppose there's instances where you can't buy the caliper anymore. Well, that's Not, right. I mean, I know. You... I know Steve's just finished some for. A, I think it's a 1967 Mercedes 250 SL. Are they? Are they here? Yeah. Yeah. Um, January. Got yeah, okay, yeah. Because the thing is, if you can't, I mean, I know you can buy these, but if you can't buy those anymore, and they're not, they're not ruined, 
Yeah, we can do it, yeah, for sure. Okay, so, you, so I'm only saying that because if people watch us and go, I've got a rare set of calipers, I'm going to send them yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, and you'll yeah. go, no, don't send them in, don't send them in. <laughs> No, we, we, do it, we do it as favours for people, really, okay. generally. Um, it doesn't cost very much to do, does it? Steve's quite cheap, aren't you? Yeah. Sorry. You're quite cheap, aren't you? Yeah, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to have a look at those 250s? I will, I will. See, see how they are? That's the old school bench, yeah, look. That's yeah. the old school bench. A nice oily bench. All right. <laughs> the question is, where would they be? I can't see them, do I? I don't know where they are. He's, hid he's hidden them. He's hidden them, yeah. He's not up there. It's got a very tidy desk, though, compared to mine. He's got, yeah, it's much tidier than mine, actually, as well. Yeah, I see small bits and pieces in here. Yeah, Do you ever buy, um, like, old, like, new old stock of rare stuff in order to copy them? Uh, for calipers and... For, 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 yeah, for, for any kind of brakes where you yeah, think, yeah, well, we want to start manufacturing yeah. these again. Some of the, some of the old ones, if we if someone wants them, we do need a, we need a sample generally. Yeah. It's easier, but we can do it from drawings. Um, yeah, what we would do, we'd make a, a low volume die to make certain stuff, which is what we call a knockout die. Yeah. So we'd make them individually, like literally one at a time in our, yeah. in our lab. We have a single cell area for, in our lab in Bristol. So they, they can do all the special one-offs for people. Wow. So you will do one-offs? Yeah, we can, we can do, yeah. If, if people are willing to pay. <laughs> if the customer is willing to pay. That's right. It's just discs, isn't it? Motorcycle discs. This is an interesting thing. Every motorcycle rivet for a floating disc is put in by hand. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah just by this gentleman here, then. Wow. I mean, that's artisan. People don't think of stuff like a brake disc for a motorbike yeah. that's mass produced being artisan. It's, it's all done by hand. It's obviously visually checked by him. Every batch is CMM checked in the coordinate measuring machine over there. Yeah. And then it, they're all, these are all packed by hand and rechecked before they're packed as well. Just wow. to ensure complete. This is it's obviously a safe and critical product. So you are using modern tech, but it's still actually yeah. a very and traditional even, manufacturing exactly, process. Yeah. I mean, the, I guess the. He, he rivets every single motorcycle did. That's amazing. Yeah. I'm quite surprised. And even all the rivets are made by us. You make the rivets? Yeah. Do you? Make all the rivets, yeah. I, well, because then you know they're up to a certain standard. Yeah, I'll, I'll I guess you're dealing you. with... I guess I'm, I'm sounding surprised, James, but you're... You're in a business where... Stay with it. Yeah, that's nice. I guess you're in the business of like people safely stopping vehicles. Exactly, yeah. You can't, you, you, you can't skimp on quality control, can you? Not at all. Not at all. Because you... these bikes do 200 miles an hour. Yeah, yeah. 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 This is, uh, they're all marked here, they're laser -ed. So we know the bats in the. Uh, right, okay. Number. Nick. Have you got one which is X? Is one of these done? Yeah, here. Even the solids, they're all marked. Okay. Brilliant. So we know exactly when they were made. Yeah. And basically, press the button and it blasts it with a laser and marks it. Nick, can we have a look through the screen? Yes, mate. Just bring it off. setting a new one up actually so you can go and have a look through there oh yeah that's awesome yeah. done there you go that just burnt it in yeah it's there forever it's great 
It's a, ta it's a disc tattoo. <laughs> just nice to see made in the UK on it yeah you know I, 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 I do feel quite I feel I feel quite strongly about supporting local when I say local I mean country local businesses especially when we're in a world where I suppose if you want to try to kind of look after your own economies and if yeah. there's a really good business, if there's a really good business that makes a, a decent product and they're local to you, it makes sense to buy it. I, I think so as well. Um, I think it's important to, to try and buy British made stuff and Americans to buy American yeah. stuff. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Um, because the thing is, it could be a false economy if people are trying to buy. Well, I would never buy. I would never skimp on something like a, a break. Brakes and tyres, I don't think you should ever, no. No. Because the thing, I, I, there's this impression that people don't spend lots of money on it because it's kind of boring. Yeah. It's just a thing which does a thing. It's That's just a right. black circle. That's not, but they're so crucial, aren't they? They are so, <laughs> you don't miss them until they, they stop working. That's right. These are all plates, various plates, which have, so mm. the, uh, we, we store some plates for Bristol, uh, ones which they use very few of in the yeah, train. Yeah. Um, some of these are for earth moving machines like Caterpillar and Terex. No, machines. really? You like see dig, digger brake pads? Yeah, exactly that, yeah. So Bloody that. hell, that's massive. I think that's the Terex machine. Wow. So there's a vacuum cake. <laughs> that is brilliant. Yeah, so they're obviously, they're shot glass and tumbled and then yeah, treated yeah. before they use. I want you to tell me what your like top three best selling car and motorbike <laughs> discs or pads <laughs> are. You. Your constant like heavy hitters, your well, EBC's bread and butter what, uh, products. Okay, so one of our motorcycle ones is, is a Harley. Yeah. Uh, and that's purely because if you think about all the bikes in the world, 50, 50 odd percent of the ones sold in America are all Harley. Okay. So it's going to be a Harley. huge market. Um, the Japanese ones tend to change year on year or every few years yeah. as well. So they're different. So yeah, like a Harley could be a Harley one. It could fit 15 different Harleys over a 10 year period. Yeah. So there's, there's going to be many more bikes. Yeah. Stuff like car. Depends what marketplace, but uh, VW is a big one for us. Yeah. The sort of uh, Golfs, like Golf 7, 7.5s now we're coming on. Yeah. Um, we're in the sort of three to five year. Is our so when the biggest. car goes out of warranty and needs an MOT. Yeah, and then more enthusiasts probably buy them, I yeah. guess, in that period. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, you've got some of the lower ones which are coming back up through some of the classics. Because they've, the, they've gone from being a banger to a classic. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's when you've got to notice those trends, like you were saying. Yeah. And like, I bet you, changing. yeah, like 12 years ago, how many Datsun Cherry pap, discs yeah. and pads might you sell? <laughs> yeah, and of course, yeah. now a Datsun Cherry is probably quite a desirable car. Exactly. So. Yeah. Especially the turbo one. Turbo. <laughs> yeah. It's brilliant. Big old operation, this, James. Yeah. It's a big Get operation. Getting bigger. This is uh, also just the MC, this is where we uh, our rings. These are racing rings. Just a 350 oh. mil drum chip. Wow. 32 fit. Bloody hell, that's big. Yeah, that's so nice. What we're doing in here. You, if you lift one of those out, you see the screw pattern on there. That's a two handed lift, that is, James. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to lie. So 350 mil in diameter, so that would probably uh, fit some of the, actually the Golfs, like the 18, there's an SG2FC 1877, which is a, a popular conversion for the Golf. Yeah. That's right. And then you've got... Uh, these, these are standard sort of, uh, standard sort of brake disc here. So they're getting, are they getting painted in there? They? No, they're getting um, milled in there. They're getting milled in there, right. Yeah. You can 
see all the variations uh, yeah. here. Hi Tony, how you doing man? Which, I've uh, lost count of how many CNC machines you've got. <laughs> there's a lot of them. Right up here, this one's a double pallet one, so there's there's two mil, and then it, the whole pallet flips around into the machine, and then the other two are being milled while they're being loaded. Oh, so really? We're looking here, look. That's, that's, that'll be the two being machine then. Right, okay, one. okay, okay. There's a bit of everything, isn't there? There really is. All sorts of machines here, Johnny. This is uh, not being used this week at the moment, but this will break this balancing machine. So like a tyre balancer, yeah. spin it to this. Yeah, make sure it's true. where it is, and then um, mills a groove in the edge to make it completely balanced. Right, OK. This is, this is our laser department. So Everyone's singing. I don't know why they're singing. That's a lot of singing. Hey, carry on singing, Mark. It's very hard. <laughs> have a look at, have a look through here, Johnny. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You can oh, see what this is doing on here, though. That is really good. So how many have you got? Well, the machine, the machine works out what we need, and it and it places them on the board and works out the best combination to for the less least wasted. Yeah. Now, there's a couple of things we do with the wastage here. If if it's large enough, we'll cut a stainless steel backing plate for our racing brake pads out of it. Yeah. And we also cut out promo gifts like uh, bottle openers yeah. in the shape of a little brake pad. So we do, we do so you that. use all the energy. It's save wasting, yeah. But that's, that's, that is busy. I think that's about a 5 mil stainless, maybe a 4.8. But it's, it's cut through it like butter. Yeah. We have two of these working all the time. Right. And they put it in their own place. Wow, it looks like a train. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Stuff in there. So I, I, I see it day in, day out, but it's still amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you think about how much. So that's, that's, that's what starts with the sheet. That's right, yeah. And before you scrub that, you'll use... I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's some artist somewhere who, who died for that. Yeah. But, uh, I could put that in my garden instead of a fence. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All the different shapes you see, that's all the way I've just realised we, we've done it. We're, 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 we've gone all the way around. All the way around, around here, yeah. And these, we make these. So we're making parts for it. It's making parts for its own machine. So what they do, they cut out these zigzags, which slot in, and then the sheets. That's what they land on, so it can be laid oh, around. Oh, okay. So these need to be replaced, do they? That's what. Yeah, these need to be replaced. Today. This is scrap, and that's what goes on there. Right. Okay. Okay. I'm still. I'm still. I'm, I'm sure someone amazement. would love that, wouldn't they? Yeah, they would. On the top of a wall. It's like an anti-theft uh, thing. That looks great. 
<laughs> looks really good. There you go. I'm still in awe of, of laser cutting. I mean, it, it amazes me as well. Laser, yeah. water, water jetting as well, yeah. This revolutionized so many industries. Another door. Another door. Ah, calipers. Okay, so we cast these locally. Yeah. Just to, just a, about twenty minutes away. Yeah. Uh, all, all designed by us, cast to our spec, and then they all come here, and then they're all machined and finished here. So every other component we make in house. Here. They're lovely. Hi, Mike. We also in here, we call this the race division, but this is uh, so this is making floats and rotors as well in here for high performance vehicles and, and obviously retrofit. Like I mentioned that one up there for the, uh, the 7.5 Golf. People like a, a floating rotor, you know, with black center. Yeah. Um, and then uh, cast iron out there. But that's There's quite a lot of aesthetics to brakes, isn't there? Do you think you get customers who will uh, buy it because it looks good. 100%. And, and if even, in, even though it's it may not perform... I, I also think if you go into a showroom and look at a car and one's, one's got sort of silver or rusty silver calipers on, and another one's got big red, bright red calipers, which yeah. one are you gonna, is your eye going to go to? Yeah. You know, so. They are quite a big, especially as depending on the wheel design, they're very visible, aren't they? Exactly. So they're all machined here and then they're sent upstairs for finishing. And this one here is brackets. So this make we make brackets for big brake kits. Yeah. Um, out of uh, billet al uh, aluminium. I gonna say, it again. look at all these. So this is how it starts. You know, like, it's like a scene out of a bank, a bank vault. <laughs> That's right, yeah. You could just pretend it's solid silver. Yeah. And so one, one side is machined and then they split over into soft jaws and made the other side. And again, another subcontract where we send that for anodizing. A little bit of anodizing. Mm. And here's some of the six pot calipers that are similar. Coming back. Very nice. Look at that. It's brilliant. And the, the, these are the, all the so development the, the radio, ones. So the radio station of choice. Yeah. Well, these it's are, hot eighties today. Yeah, that's right. Well, we have a vote every every few months. We have a vote. So Do it's you? Five days, and they can choose. Yeah, one for each day. Now that's interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So this one here, look, this is one which is being for this year, the all development. This one, you put on what? So it's a not. It's a nine. Nine eleven. Nine nine one. GT3 in the turbo. Wow, okay, so pretty pretty high-end thing. Fit yeah. for race use. Important words. Yeah. So that's how they look when they come back. I like black anodizing. Yeah, and we laser all these upstairs. I'll show you that in if you want to see it in a minute. Hmm. That's cool. We'll go back through here, round and upstairs. What's so. on, on, a, on a manufacturer brakes? Yeah. Um, OEM brakes. The markup must be is must be colossal. Yeah, because yeah, because you because you hear about you hear about manufacturers charging you know eight thousand quid for, for a set of performance car yeah. discs and pads, and you kind of go, look, I know the quality yeah. and all that, but well, I think that what they rely on is easy to tick that box. Right. And finance, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And then when they come to replace them, I think is there that is that that mindset of like it must go back to the manufacturer to have the brakes, otherwise it's inferior in some way. Yeah, it's I that. Think, it's that. Yeah, but that's the whole idea of, of Regulation Ninety across Europe. So we know that they're as good, if not better, than the OE. Yeah. Right? And yeah. Well, we always say ours are better than the OE, but you know. Well, you presumably test them extensively. Well, exactly. Yeah. But You've got the our, evidence somewhere on a computer sort of... file somewhere. In there. <laughs> that's right. Well, this is our. This is our Northampton test area anyway. This is uh, R&D. So you see a constant stream of different vehicles coming in and out of here all day long. Yeah. Um, and we also have our own in-house test cars. 
um, and bikes and and and, e -bikes, and scooters and and dirt bikes and e-scooters that's always fun well, we, use, a, we use that to scoot around the site at night do you yeah well then the, i was thinking about this because they have brake pads on the back of you see yeah so. well we're, you're now moving into the future of what you would class as personal transportation. Absolutely. Because you've got, you've got the e-bike thing, which has exploded. Yeah, yeah. And shows no sign of stopping. And you've got the sort of rideables, haven't you? Yes. Monowheels, scooters, yeah. trikes, exactly. all kinds of variants. And I guess you guys... And they've all got disc pads, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this, this one here, this is an e-bike, and this has got that, one of our oversized discs on. So you see that's an oversized to the original. That's nice. It's going to be do those in con like obviously contoured, which we call contoured or yeah, yeah, or just just the regular way. So that's got a, it's got one on the back as well. With an EBC sticker, of course. With an EBC sticker, which will add to the braking power, <laughs> and that's as right. we all know. Yeah, so, uh, it's a nice looking bike. Yeah, yeah, I use it to ride to work on. Is he yours, is it? Yeah, yeah. Yamaha drivetrain. It's got a Yamaha drivetrain. Now it was either it was either a Bosch or a Yamaha, and I thought, well, I, I know the reliability of a Yamaha in in motorcycles, so I thought I'd try that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. That's brilliant. Let's go and have a look at the caliper assembly upstairs. I'm lost now. I know we've come back to where we started, but I couldn't tell you where anything is. Well, we also need to go back and see the packaging area, don't we? Yeah, That's I was going to ask you about that. Should we, do that for, should we do that first and come back we here? We can do that, yeah, we can do that. These are all yours, obviously. You just, oh, well, obviously. You <laughs> and admire them every morning when you turn up from work. You tell yeah. me that you cycle. Well, we're doing a, we got some tea, we've got some TV stuff going on on Sunday at a local a uh, local event yeah which we need to do so uh, we need to get them cleaned up and taken over there <coughs> if we go in through reception how here, many Jonathan, people does ebc employ that was a question i was going to ask you because i mean here well on, on on this site there's 123 at the moment okay uh bristol bristol about the same roughly okay. yeah and then you've got uh, vegas and ohio as well Vegas and Ohio. Do you know, I've only ever been Vegas to Ohio. Is, Vegas is the one everyone wants to go to. Well, of course. Although I, I went, I've only ever been to Ohio once and it was for the World um, Tractor Pulling Competition. Oh, was it? Fantastic. It was bloody amazing. Yeah, I can imagine. I had yeah. a really, really fun day. Yeah, yeah, brilliant stuff. Hi guys, how you doing? Oh, there's an old uh, Norton racing bike, actually, yeah. That's lovely. Yeah. Is that yours? No, that's the company's bike. That's lovely. Yeah. Push, push start. Is it? So it's no starter motor. <laughs> no. Or kick. Obviously, the... Uh, that's amazing, isn't it? The gears on the other the, side. The whole, the whole for the, uh, the oil tank. Yeah. That's brilliant, isn't it? That's very cool. Let's have a look at the uh, little packaging area out here. Yeah. I'll just follow you, James. I it's don't always, know where I'm going. It's always, it's always busy. There's always people in and out, and it's... Uh, That's a good thing. Great fun, yeah. That is a good thing. You know, like the materials that have been in pads, has obviously changed over the years because of regulation, environmental impact and all that stuff. Yeah, that's right. And I think the latest one is uh, the reduction of copper. So that's the biggie at the moment. And all of our, all of our organic brake pads, we've, we've removed copper now and uh, over the last few years and retested and whatever. So it's all, it's yeah. all good. So what you're always trying to do is to minimise wear without compromising the performance yeah and ha yeah and also have the stability the friction stability over temperature is quite important as well so yeah yeah we even make stuff like this is a like a a bus pad so if you a bus yeah feel the weight of a set of those that's a small bus 
Oh, <laughs> <laughs> quite heavy. That's a dumbbell right there. That's, that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> What's the smallest pad that you do? Do you, um, do you must be for a scooter or a uh, mountain bike. The, and they're like little, very, very, very small. Yeah, very small. Like tenpence pieces. And then we make um, uh, an EFO one two five, which is for earth moving machines. These big Terex, yeah, uh, T series dump trucks. You know, with the wheels. Oh, the, the yeah, yeah. So those brake pads are about this long. I've got to see a pair of those one day. And uh, yeah, and they they're very, very heavy. And they, I think they have thirty two per vehicle. Really, thirty two of those per vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> Big boys toys. I've driven one of those once. Have you? Yeah. It was I'd really, love really good. To I had to do that. it for a documentary for Discovery Channel. And I, I mean it takes about ten minutes to climb into the bloody thing. Yeah. They're Cabs incredible, aren't they? Yeah, it was really good. So you see these sintered brake pads. So we've made the plates. Yeah. We've passivated, copper passivated the plates. Yeah. We've sent them to America. They've put the friction on and now they've come back and they're being packed here. Okay, so nothing gets packed in the States? Uh, well, yes it does because obviously for transportation purposes Ohio send the Sinter direct to Vegas. Right. So we have uh, exactly the same setup in Vegas as this. Right, right. Okay. So that's what they look like when they come back. Brilliant. You're now going to tell me what that's from. I don't know, I don't you know. You need to know. I need you to know every single pad because <laughs> it was so impressive. Yeah, it's good stuff, isn't it? So these are all packaged now. Yeah, so they're placed on there and then they go through and you'll see the film is heated up across. Yeah. Just here, oh, then. It's really shrink wrap. Yeah, push down and then vacuum. Yeah. Out. And then this is a die cutting them out. Of course. Do about 10,000 pairs a day here. A day? Just here? Yeah. Mm. 10,000 pairs of those a day. That's all right. <laughs> Full race pads for double H. Yeah, well, there we yeah we do a double H. There's two grades above that for race. There's EPFA, which is a track day pad. Yeah. And then we do a full race pad, which is a GPFAX. And the formulas are slightly different. Right. But I wouldn't recommend using GPFAX if you're just a regular sort of track day. <laughs> they're a bit too grippy. They're a bit bitey. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. 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 That's brilliant. Well, thank you very much for that tour. No worries. That was very comprehensive. We do a lot of stuff. We do, yeah. What does EBC stand for? Egg, bacon and chips. <laughs> Doesn't mean anything. It's does, just EBC, yeah. Does it not mean anything? No, no. So it's not the initial... If anyone ever asks us, we just say egg, bacon and chips. So it's... Wow. So, okay. It's not like the initials of the uh, of founder or... No, the, no, no, not at all, no. EBC. <laughs> You could call it anything you want, couldn't you? <laughs> exactly, yeah. A lot of people think it's European Brake Corporation. Excellent Brake Company. <laughs> there you go. Is that, is that it? <laughs> we prefer egg, bacon and chips. <laughs> <laughs> but of course in America, that's eggs, bacon and crisps. <laughs> that's right, yeah. <laughs> Which is probably not the best meal you've ever had. Although, you know, if you've got a hangover, it's probably glorious. That's right. Bloody hell, how do you get that down from up there? We also make uh, brakes for trains and stuff which are pretty large. Tra trains? Yeah. Do you? Mm. How do you get the contract for something like that? Uh, it's quite a lengthy process to be honest. Yeah. There's a lot of testing involved. But once you've got the contracts, they do last for a, a significant amount of time. Brakes just, for just remind me, just because I saw an old train wheel from the dyno up there, look. Oh, yeah. So we have a full-scale inertia dyno in Bristol, which can replicate uh, trains, braking on trains. Yeah. That's quite a powerful dyno if it oh, can do very, that. Very, very powerful, yeah. Very big, yeah. 
because train, trains are, are hundreds of tons. That's right, yeah. yeah so let's hope those, those flywheels never come off. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> so everything from like e-scooters to, to, to quarry trucks. Yeah, quarry trucks is quite a big one. Trains. And, uh, we do a lot of military contracts. We do, um, we even make a brake pad for a private jet's captain seat to stop it spinning on takeoff. What? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. I can't say which jet, I'm not allowed to say, but we do do that. <laughs> That's just weird. So stop it from doing that mid takeoff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You developed a brake system. Yeah, let's hope they work. Yeah, I was going to say. You don't want to be side saddling <laughs> a plane, do you, really? Yeah. Uh, should we just go upstairs and just have one quick look at one more bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Johnny? You might like. Is it not related to brakes at all? It's like uh, your collection of Star Wars figures or something That's like that. right, yeah. As working around cars, bikes, other vehicles, is it kind of put off your personal interest? Because I know some people it does. Or has it propagated it? I, 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 I do love bikes and cars. Yeah. And I guess I always dreamed to have a classic Lancia, like a Lancia Peter Coop. You're joking. No. I've just had an email two days ago about someone that's found one in a barn. It's been there for 30 years. <laughs> have you? Yeah, in Norfolk. Oh, I'm yeah. probably going to go and see it. Well, I love this. my favourite car. <laughs> Is it? And maybe one day when I retire, I'll buy one. I don't know. Well, I'll send you some pictures when they <laughs> yeah, go and take yeah. this one out. It's a cool looking car and you don't see them. I think it was just ahead of its time in, term, in the engine and everything really. Yeah, yeah. All of those beaters. Even the gamma to a degree. Yeah. Of course we caught everyone on a Friday tea break as we've been walking around. I, I don't mind that, I suppose it's easier to film. Oh yeah, of course, you've got hoses. Hoses. We haven't seen any hoses, have we yet? And these are the calipers. Fiesta ST, M3. M346 is my favourite M3. And mine. Is it? Yeah, 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 I remember when they were 10 grand. What an idiot. Why didn't I buy one? James is breaking into his own stock. This is against company rules. Right. Oh, look at that. That's nice, isn't it? So those were the, um, these were the, um, the castings that I saw downstairs. That's right, right yeah, they're finished now, so. We're all assembled up here, and pressure, everyone's pressure tested. Everyone That's nice. has a, a lasered uh, barcode in it, so we know that it's been tested. We can tell on that machine over That's there. brilliant. And everyone has got a little certificate. We tested it. Wow, okay. It's pretty, in it? I do like a, I do like a handsome caliper. <laughs> it's quite a thing. It does a fairly important job. Yeah, yeah. I'd say. It's also nice to see made in UK cast in it, isn't it? Like well, you said earlier. Thing, that was the thing that caught my eye when you when you showed it to me initially, because I suppose it's very rare that everything's made in the UK. Mm. I know you said you farm a few bits out, but they're still to, yeah, to within, companies within 20 miles. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it doesn't go to the far away place and then come back again or That's right. or it's not just badge badge marketed yeah that is very clean and tidy yeah well it has to be because you can't afford to get any dust in any caliper seals or of course not. piston seals or anything else going on yeah another, another laser obviously laser and everything yeah it's all the hubs are lasered up here and then we've got lunch rooms and stuff on this floor we have four different lunch rooms for the employees and the different themes. So like that's four. What I this four one's ta rooms. table tennis and and table football. This one. Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. 
And then there's a pool table one and a dance one and a, and a quiet dance, library one. You've got a dance and pool in your lunchroom. <laughs> I'm bloody working for BBC, that's it. <laughs> yeah, here you go. That's oh, really nice. Table tennis and table football and stuff. I really, I played it for the first time in like 25 years. <laughs> yeah. Last summer and realised I, I, I very much enjoyed it. We were thinking about getting one for our garden at home, actually. You should yeah. do it. You should do it. Yeah, so we try and look after everyone, and that's, uh, there's obviously ovens and stuff. So, so there's four of these on site? Yeah, this one's actually a little bit larger, because it's the nearest one, but... Yeah. Wow, that's four impressive. Them. It just all helps, doesn't it? What, as in morale for employees? Yeah, I, mean, I think yeah. it definitely helps. Hiya, Keith. All right. Well, it just means they've been more inclined to work better, weren't they? Yeah, I think so. Well, and we appoint everything, obviously, because we own it, we can do a, we can choose the spec of everything as well, which makes... makes it How old is this building, then? There's two parts to this building, so... This, this part you're stood in now was 2016, and the part you were in a minute ago was 2011, so we've extended around. OK. And you're saying you own the land adjacent to it so you could build another building at the same time we've got planning permission for both yeah that's amazing back out here <laughs> i can't work out how we've been how we've done what we've done That's the Fiesta we're building up to give away, that one, Johnny. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. That is, have a quick look? Yeah. So you can still enter this competition, can't you? Yeah, until May, I believe. Yeah, until which May. is... It's £1.50 a ticket and it all goes to charity. That's amazing. Dreamcargiveaways.co.uk and they, they're taking no admin fee or anything. They're just doing it purely for charity. For and it's us. a heavily modified Fiesta ST. Yeah, so it was white originally. Yeah obviously been wrapped in all sorts of different colours. Yeah. I like the rim, I like the rims. I know this We've is just this this was just added on last week, this spoiler. We yeah. put it on max I like it. Fours. I like it. And then it. this is all gonna be wrapped and everything yeah. over the next few weeks. So yeah. And this thing's kicking out like double the horsepower of the original. Well, the max it went to on the dyno was 401 Bloody horsepower. Hell. But we've dial we dialed it back to 380. Yeah, because. And then we dialed it back to 350 for, for a track day with Jake Hill, because we thought he'd. Uh, Jake Hill's a British touring car driver. We thought he'd go a bit crazy, so we dialed it back a little bit. And did he go that. a bit crazy? Yeah. Yeah, he did. Yes. He's an amazing driver, though. Yeah. You can tell the difference between a. A, a professional driver yeah, than yeah. one who thinks he's good on track. You Absolutely. Know? It's just so different. It's the calmness. Yeah. Even when there's a storm. Yeah. I think yeah. that's the thing that you realise. That's a really, really cool thing. I mean, they're good standards. Yeah, this is But this 350, is 380 horsepower. Yeah. And it's, you can adjust it. So there's a, there's like an electronic gadget. You can yeah. adjust it back up if you want and to. And stripped out with the cage. We put the cage in last week and then we've cage put this good. carpet back in. In yeah. the back, so it all looks nice and tidy. It's really nice. I like that. Good fun. They're great. They're Presumably, great I can't enter this uh, this this competition, can I? <laughs> no, no. I, I can't either. So <laughs> I'd it's like right. to. Uh, my mum can. Yeah, that's and right. My dad yeah, can. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, all my neighbours can. My brother can for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If he wins it, I don't think it would go down very well. No, I don't think it would go down well either. But it's all possible, isn't it? Yeah, and we got in here today, we've got a, an old, I think that's a Mark III Mazda MX-5, is it? You probably know more than me. Uh, yeah, today. yeah, um, from memory that is, yes. Yeah. So we're just developing a big brake kit on this one, uh, which is very similar to the Mazda RX-8, which is one of our own track cars, actually. I was lo looking at the RX-8, because I do like those. Yeah, see? Well, that's that's the setup. So this is a big brake kit for for straight bolt on for MX fives. Yeah, yeah. And they make I've noticed MX fives have become such a uh, create such a massive cult following. Uh, yeah. Mostly people under twenty five years old. 
Yeah, it's odd, isn't it? So I think when they were new, they were aimed at a certain market, and now they've hit, well, not this one necessarily, but the older ones, they've hit a certain age where a load of young people are realising that they're fantastic for mods, cross the rear wheel drive, Absolutely. they're an affordable yeah. rear drive. Yeah, yeah. Decent, decent drivers. I mean, they're, they're fantastic, and, and over the last eighteen months, they're increasing in value pretty quickly, I believe. Yeah. Um, but there's not many cars like it, really. I mean, no. I guess the most beautiful type of car like this is the Honda S2000. Yeah. I would imagine they're fetching big money in now. And harder to insure because of the engine size compared to yeah, yeah. earlier. Yeah. You know, sure. like a one point six earlier makes fine. I've noticed a turbo. <laughs> yeah. That, we'll wasn't, that wasn't there when I went on the launch of the MX-5. <laughs> the BBR, that's not a BBR turbo. This would be good. Yeah, it should be fun. So all your R&D is done on, like, for kits and stuff. All done here, done? yeah, all done here, yeah. Yeah. You've even got a go-kart, look. An old go-kart with our... We make brake pads for the cart. Of and course. Stuff. Totally yeah, forgot yeah. about go-karts. Yeah, it's just having a new steering knuckle. That looks like it's seen some action there. Well, that's, it's, it's, our, it's, it's my, it's my 14-year-old and a 9-year-old daughter's lockdown fun. Oh, is that When I work at a weekend and I'm looking after them, they can... They can oh, is that what they do? They just drive around here? They can do yeah. it in here, yeah. Yeah. I think we've all had a go. <laughs> I bet you have. Yeah, the, the, the idea is to get it all going, re redo that steering now, we've done the engine and stuff, and then we're going to strip it right down and do everything from scratch and paint it all and make it all look nice, paint the coat and stuff, and then rebuild it back up. Good idea. So it's to sort of uh, show them a bit of engineering yeah. and a bit of fun at the same time, you know? Yeah, my daughter desperately wants something like that, or some like a little buggy. Yeah. But I... Uh... There's not many things off the shelf that can go off-road. That's right, yeah, exactly. I don't really yeah. want to get her a quad. No, I think quads, quads are a little bit more dangerous, yeah. Yeah. I've actually looked some of the prices of them. I've actually said to it, I could get you an MOT failure actual car. <laughs> it would be a lot cheaper. Yeah, yeah. The problem is, is you need a field. That's what you need to be a That's farmer. right, yeah, yeah, you do. You need, a you need space. And yeah. MOT failure. Us, most of us don't have it in this country, like we were saying earlier. Yeah. 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 Yeah, these are cool. I like RX-8s. I've always thought they're pretty good. This has had some work done. Well, I remember my brother taking me to my wedding in a brand new RX-8. Really? <laughs> yeah, in 2003. Yeah, I remember they were, they were really... It was probably a what car or an auto car it car, I would imagine. It an auto car car, yeah. But this is modified, I've noticed. Yeah, it's got uh, it's got a cage in there. It's, it's got, got some yeah. seats. It's got no dash or anything. Yeah. Sunroof delete panel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That we made that on the laser. Yeah. Still a rotary. Yeah, still a rotary. Because I know a lot yeah. of them get changed for other things. Do they? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, hey. Chevy LS motors are quite popular. Okay. Yeah. Well, that would be a bit crazy with an LS motor, I would imagine. Mm. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I like it. It's actually, I mean, we have a bit of fun with it, and, and it is just a, so much fun driving. Yeah. Especially with its strip take, because it's so different to the original one. Well, it was always a very unusual car. Yeah. Besides the, the rotary, the You've door was... You've got the was, suicide door, yeah. And it's a shame that people don't maintain the, the rotary properly, and then they, they always sell them as a, as, as a broken project. Yeah. got the standard Toyo 888Rs. Yeah, they're great, aren't they? Yeah. They're good. They're good we just stuff. had some more delivered for our Nissan GTR this morning, and yeah. off, off the shelf they look huge. Right off the car. Well, my electric dragster, when I, when I was experimenting with tyres on that, I bought I bought a pair of the the, the 888Rs. I mean, look at that. And, um, Monstrous. It, it ran a... It ran a 10 second quarter mile on, on, on those. Yeah, yeah, wow. those, yeah. And Brilliant. they were like, they were 70 quid each. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Because of course we have to come all around here when, 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 when we're competing in the, the road legal drag 
car um, street eliminator championship. Oh, wow. You have to do a mandatory street cruise before as part of qualification. Oh, so it's you? always around Northamptonshire. Oh, so, okay, I didn't know that. 20, 25 to 27 mile cruise. Yeah. If you break down, you don't even qualify. Right. Um, if you have any, if you if you break down and you get help, uh, or and if the car won't hot start, yeah, you're out. It's quite it's quite <laughs> ruthless. Quite ruthless. Brilliant. And that's what's that every year, is it? Or? Yeah, it's it's um it, it normally has about four events at some point a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. But it's just the cars have to be MOT taxed, insured. Yeah, Santapod's are good. Well, we've got a lot of local places around here, haven't we? Because we've got Silverstone, Santa Pod. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a brilliant pair of tracks. Yeah. Right. You're popular. Yeah, Someone's yeah. trying to get him. They've been calling him <laughs> relentlessly. <laughs> He's busy. Yeah. He's busy. Thank you for showing me around. That's, That's right, really Johnny. Our, our pleasure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Of EBC. Yeah, thanks very much for popping down. Hopefully your calipers will be ready in a minute. So I was going to we'll say, grab those. reckon it's coffee o'clock yeah. and then caliper o'clock. I hope you've enjoyed that little whistle stop tour of EBC breaks. Uh, so much gets made here and it's wonderful to see a British business thriving. Um, watch out soon on the Late Break Show for a playlist called Car Caves. That's where I'll be exploring people's garages and collections of vehicles in great depth. So keep tuned for that. You can go to my YouTube channel for that. Cheers for watching.